to our service of worship. Today is August the 30th, 2020, and we are gathered together by video once again to join our hearts together in praise of our Lord. And so as we begin our time together, I invite you to join with us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to join our hearts together and to share the love you have shown to us through our worship. And may we give you the praise and the glory in all that we say and do. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And now I invite you as you are able to stand and join with us as we sing. needs today are brought to you in the email that conveys the link for this video to you and I ask that you hold these needs in your prayers the people the opportunities for sharing God's grace and God's mercy the times of bearing words of healing and help and hope to others all of these are bound up in our prayer lives and each day as we gather before God with the, our own personal needs, I pray that you'll lift up these needs as well, asking God to work mightily and powerfully in each of these so that they will accomplish and they will see the, uh, not that they accomplish, but that they see the touch of God upon their lives and help each one to experience the prairie presence and the peace that only Jesus can give. Uh, be in prayer for those in the uh, uh, path of the destructive hurricane that just came through. Please be in prayer for the leaders of our nations. We need peace. Be in prayer for those in our communities who are, who are struggling, searching for home and for uh, occupations and uh, opportunities to, to grow to be stronger as a result of God's love. And now may we join our hearts together for a moment of our pastoral prayer and then our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Loving and eternal God, you have given us so much. You have blessed us with family, health, hope, and you have given us the healing we've needed when we've come to you. 
Lord, asking that you might intercede, not only in our lives, but in the lives of those around us. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be with those who were in the destructive path of this hurricane and all the continued uh, rain and damage that it did throughout uh, this part of the United States. Give guidance to those who seek to help and help us too, Lord, to know how we can reach out with the resources that have been entrusted to us in order to be a help to those who are struggling now, sometimes just to get by. Loving God, we pray for the leaders of our nations, asking, O oh Lord, that your hand guide them, guide their hearts, guide their thoughts, that they may be about the work of carrying out your message of mercy and grace, your work of, of sharing the resources that we all have. And Lord, may it touch and enliven lives everywhere, for we need you more than anything we can imagine we need you so come O lord into our presence make new lives in us strengthen us for your service and lord heal us that we might be help hope and healing to others for this we pray in the name of jesus and as he taught us so now we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our meet and greet time, I encourage you to reach out with God's love to those who you normally would sit next to in worship, but also I pray that you'll reach out to those who are your neighbors, those who live close to you, those who live with you, and help them to experience that love of God for them. Please remember your church as well with your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. Your care for this, this institution means that we are able to reach out and help others to know God's love too. There will be a screen at the end of this video which gives you ways by which you may continue to support this ministry. We thank you. Jesus continues to be teaching the disciples how they will carry on when he has ascended to the Father. And so today we have a, an important lesson that 
that will touch hearts and lives. So here, hear these words. Today's scripture is Matthew 16, 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we praise you for the gift of your Son and for the teaching that he continues to show to all of us. Help us, O Lord, to grow in his image, to be a light and a witness to others. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lost and found is an interesting concept. When we look at lost and found, we we expect that here will be the accumulation of things that somehow or another were misplaced. Uh, set aside, not even, um, uh, some people are not even aware they have lost them, but sometimes have lost them and didn't know what else to do. Never thought that it could have occurred in this particular place at this time. And so there's, there's this accumulation. You get uh, all kinds of miscellaneous items. If you're in a school, you'll get backpacks, you'll get jackets, you'll get hats, mittens, you'll find a a scarf or a muffler, you'll find these things that got left behind. Um, When you're talking about kids in school, um, I expect some of the things that end up in Lost and Found are things that they uh, didn't actually lose. They left them behind instead. But when you go to a, um, uh, a large store, if you go to a business and ask for a lost and found department, what will you find there? Various, various things, maybe a calculator, a book, maybe a glove. There's all kinds of things that end up lost and found. Why do they end up there? Well. I suspect in many cases, people just get distracted. They set something down and they wander off and forget about it. But you know, there's another thought that comes with lost and found as well. And that is by losing something, you have the opportunity to replace it. An old jacket now becomes a new jacket. An old pair of gloves now becomes a new pair of gloves. Things that once had purpose and meaning now have been found to be eh, a little tired, a little worn out, time for something new. When Jesus is talking to the disciples, he's trying to help them to understand something about his life. He's saying, you know, I'm, I'm, the time is coming when I will have to go up to Jerusalem and there I will experience suffering then they will and they will put me to death but I will be raised again on the third day now this was not supposed to be the life of a messiah the life of a messiah was to be one who would be the conqueror the one who would come in with power drive out the occupying forces reestablish worship 
in the temple. Be of the line of David, conqueror, a powerful person, one who would then reign forever. This was the expectation of the people of Israel, and therefore it was the expectation of the disciples as well. What Jesus proposed did not sound anything like what they were looking forward to. Peter steps up. Nor this must never happen to you. Wow. I can understand his anger. You see, he was hoping that, that things were going to be better. But what Jesus was talking about was definitely not in the line of what he considered to be better. Jesus was talking about setting aside this search for better to have which is best. Trouble was that that didn't make a lot of sense to Peter at the time. What's going on? Well, Jesus, in seeking to help the disciples understand what their life would be like, asked them to examine the things that they believe are important. He wants them to understand that what they've been doing has been, has been formative. It's been, it's been teaching them a new way. It's been intent upon forming in them people who would have a, a, a different goal for living. We have goals for living. We want oftentimes to accomplish things so that, that um, we feel good about it. We feel good about ourselves. We're happy. We have joy in our lives. We smile. We, we sing. We like to do those things. Most of all, we like to feel good about ourselves, who we are, where we are, how we have made our journey and our mark upon life. We like those things. Jesus, though, is asking the disciples to take an opposite tack. He said, those who would be my disciples are to take up their cross daily and follow me. Well, a cross, cross was a torture device. People died on crosses. The idea of, of taking up a cross and, and following Jesus, uh, that didn't square with this, uh, this, this life of following Jesus. Three years of, of wandering around being his disciples didn't seem like this was going to be good, good uh, recompense for that life. Instead, they were hoping that, well, they'd get to go in, they'd be part of the, um, the new establishment. Witness James and John and, and the request that one might sit on his right and one on his left when he came into his glory. And Jesus says, no, this is not the way it's going to be. This is not what you can expect. What you will expect instead is, is to be the one who serves others. You'll be the one that says, not what is my desire, but what is God's desire for my life? And then taking those, those, uh, those guidelines that God has set down and living into them well, we, we, we hope thereby to change the world. Why did Jesus come? We see things had gotten kind of messed up. They, people were, were messing the, the relationship that God intended to have with them. Things had gotten off into to personal gain. It had gotten off into um, doing what uh, benefited the individual as opposed to what accomplished God's purposes. And Jesus in come back, act, coming back reminded them that, that God wants more than anything else to have a relationship with us. He wants us to know His love. He wants us to know His provision for our lives. 
And Jesus, through his signs and wonders and miracles, was, was showing that to the people. He was showing it to the disciples because they needed to know that when they go out and share God's love with others, they would then be able to point to these things and say, here, this was how God showed that he has a greater abundance than we can even imagine. We don't have to worry about, do we have enough clothes? Do we have enough to eat? Do we have a place to live? God knows our needs. He's provided for all of this well in advance. So what we're after then is not to accumulate more. It's not to be people who have power and be able to control the lives of others. We are instead to be people who, who go and share this mercy, this grace that God has shown to us. We're to live it out before other people so that, that they may know that their lives matter, that they have a part to play in God's kingdom, and that they will be able to, to then experience this inflow of God's compassion but God's great grace extended to them. The disciples, the disciples eventually got it. They, for almost all of them, died on a, died as a part of their, their following. They were martyred. And that was, uh, that was a sobering part of this journey. How are things different today? Well, crosses are worn more for ornaments now. They're parts of jewelry. Our lives are a whole lot easier. There's less persecution, shall we say. Following Christ is a, a normal part of the lives of most of the people of the world. Well, maybe not most, but a goodly number. People don't look at it and automatically consign us to, to being heretics and uh, people who, who want to cause trouble. But is that what Jesus came to show us? You see, when he said, I want you to take up your cross, I want you to follow me, he was asking us to do something that stepped outside of, outside of being accepted by society. He asked us to step outside of, of doing things that people saw as normal. He wanted us to, to be different. John Wesley looked upon this guidelines that, that, that Jesus was setting before the disciples and he distilled that down because he wanted the people called Methodist to understand that their lives had a purpose more than just living and having the label Christian more than having any label that would denote us as Christ followers. He wanted us to be people who did live as Christ lived. And so we set down three simple rules. We call them simple rules, but in truth, they require a fair amount of work, a fair amount of effort. First, we're to do no harm by thought, word, or deed, we are to do no harm to any person, place, or thing. That sounds kind of simple, doesn't it? Do no harm. But that means also that you look with charity and compassion in all situations upon people who are struggling. You seek to do that which does not cause harm, doesn't hurt others. Second, he said, we're to do all the good we can. Well, doing all the good we can then means that we step out of doing that which accomplishes good for us in order to be able to accomplish that which does good to others. Creation, 
people and the things of creation. We're to honor those. These are God's gracious gift for all of, all of humanity. Indeed, for everything. And so we were to do all the good we could by thought, word, and deed. Again, think good thoughts, say good words, do good deeds. And then he said, the third thing is, I want you to attend to the ordinances of God. Well, those are, those are big words. Reuben Job, the pastor who wrote Three Simple Rules, changed that wording just slightly. And he says, what it means is to stay in love with God. Stay in love with God. That means you live a life of, of charity and piety. You, you attend to prayer, to scripture reading, to attending worship, to participating in the sacraments. You do the things that show your love to God. Oh, love God, okay. And charity, you do the things that show your love to others. Giving of alms, okay. Give a, give, give a $5 bill or a $20 bill or a $100 bill to, to help others who do not have setting aside a time to go and participate with those who, who are struggling and unable to make it on their own. Being with those who are home alone without anyone to care for them, to offer them uh, a bit of, of your time because that demonstrates God's love to others. And then he said, I want you to do it this way because no one should look upon us doing no harm and doing all the good we can as that being what benefits us. Instead, all of these are done so that God's glory is shown and known in the hearts of all. You see, it was very important to Wesley that we understand that our lives are focused on caring for those around us. Just as the Bible said, you are always to be open-handed to the poor. You can go to Deuteronomy and look up the rest of the saying that says, the poor you will always have with you. So therefore, open your hands and be gracious unto them. Care for them. He says you're also to... to, to love to love all when Jesus walked on the earth his intent was to help us to understand that this was how God created us to be in setting that example before the disciples he says I want you to pass this on this is how you are to live and today what we come to is a decision you see, in order to be able to take on the new way, the disciples had to let go of an old way. So it was necessary that they lose their self-focused way of living in order to find the God-focused way of living that Jesus offered. Lost and found is acknowledging that we've got something that's old and worn out that we need to set aside so that we can have something that's better. You see, this life allows us then to, to experience life in God, light in Jesus, and love in the Holy Spirit. And with that with that gathering of this experience of God's presence, then we're able to be able to go into the world and help them to know that this love is for them too. Nobody's excluded. All are included instead so that this world might be the fulfillment of God's creative purpose. And then with that fulfillment, we all then are one, joining our hearts, our lives, our voices even to give praise and thanksgiving to God. 
And so today I want to ask you to examine the things that are part of your life. Are the things that are there are there things in your life that that you need to lose? We all have something. I know I do. Is there something that Jesus is offering you that's better than anything you've had to date? Absolutely. It's life and life to the fullest. So, let's take him up on that. Let's set aside self and instead pick up God that this world might know true love, true worth, true hope. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we pray. Loving God, you've given us so much and today we come offering ourselves to you that you might be a part of our lives and lead us in the way that accomplishes your purposes. Help us, O Lord, to set aside ourselves that we might gain the fullness of you. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you now as you are able to stand and join with us as we sing.
And so, be strong, be courageous, be steadfast in your faith, and let all that you do be done in love. Amen.